coming up on 5-Minute News. US in another pivotal moment as Delta variant drives surge in cases. Trump inaugural committee chair to be released on $250 million bail. And Tokyo Olympics begin with muted ceremony and empty stadium. It's Saturday, July 24. I'm Anthony Davis. The US is at another pivotal moment in this pandemic as rising COVID-19 cases show no sign of abating, driven by the Delta variant, and some hospitals are filling up, especially in areas with low vaccination rates, government officials warned yesterday. The US government did not change its guidance on mask wearing, despite debates going on in the White House and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention about whether those who have been vaccinated should once again be officially advised to wear masks indoors to prevent the spread. Most Americans who haven't been vaccinated against COVID-19 say they are unlikely to get the shots and doubt they would work against the aggressive Delta variant, despite evidence that they do, according to a new poll that underscores the challenges facing public health officials amid soaring infections in many states. Among American adults who've not yet received a vaccine, 35% say they probably will not, and 45% say they definitely will not, according to a poll from the Associated Press, NORC Center for Public Affairs Research. Just 3% said they definitely will get the shots, though another 16% say they probably will. What's more, 64% of unvaccinated Americans have little to no confidence the shots are effective against variants, including the Delta variant that officials say is responsible for 83% of new cases in the US, despite evidence that they offer strong protection. The survey was conducted before several Republican and conservative cable news personalities this week urged viewers to get vaccinated after months of stoking hesitancy. That effort comes as COVID-19 cases nearly tripled in the US over the past two weeks. The Republican governor of Alabama has said it's time to start blaming the unvaccinated folks for rising cases of COVID-19 amid concern that months of misinformation over the need and efficacy of vaccines is fueling a resurgence of coronavirus infections. The chair of former President Donald Trump's inaugural committee was ordered freed on Friday on $250 million bail to face charges he secretly worked as an agent for the United Arab Emirates to influence Trump's foreign policy. 74-year-old Tom Barrack will be subject to electronic monitoring and largely confined to his residence after he is estranged on Monday in a New York courtroom. He was arrested last Tuesday in Los Angeles near his home. Barrack is expected to plead not guilty to conspiring to influence US policy on the UAE's behalf during Trump's 2016 campaign and while Trump was president. Barrack, the founder of private equity firm Colony Capital, was among three men charged in the case. Prosecutors said Barrack used his long personal friendship with Trump to benefit the UAE without disclosing his ties to the US government. U.S. Magistrate Judge Patricia Donahue in Los Angeles ordered strict conditions for Barrack's release. He must surrender his passport, wear a GPS monitor to track his whereabouts, limit travel between Southern California and New York City, and obey a curfew. Barrack is charged with conspiracy, obstruction of justice, and making multiple false statements during a June 2019 interview with federal agents. Barrack is one of several of the former president's associates to face criminal charges, including his former campaign chair, his former deputy campaign chair, his former chief strategist, former national security adviser, former personal lawyer, and his company's longtime chief financial officer. Belated and beleaguered, the virus-delayed Tokyo Summer Olympics finally opened on Friday night with cascading fireworks and made-for-TV choreography that unfolded in a near-empty stadium, a colourful but strangely subdued ceremony that set a striking tone to match a unique pandemic games. 
As their opening played out, devoid of the usual crowd energy, the Olympics convened amid simmering anger and disbelief in much of the host country, but with hopes from organisers that the excitement of the sports to follow would offset the widespread opposition. Japanese tennis star Naomi Osaka received the Olympic flame from a torch relay through the stadium and lit the Olympic cauldron. Trepidations throughout Japan have threatened for months to drown out the usual packaged glitz of the opening. Inside the stadium after dusk on Friday, however, a precisely calibrated ceremony sought to portray that the games, and their spirit, are going on. Mostly masked athletes waved enthusiastically to thousands of empty seats and to a world hungry to watch them compete, but surely wondering what to make of it all. Some athletes marched socially distanced, while others clustered in ways utterly contrary to organizers' hopes. The Czech Republic entered with other countries, even though its delegation has had several positive COVID tests since arriving. But with people still falling ill and dying each day from the coronavirus, there's a particular urgency to the questions about whether the Olympic flame can burn away the fear or provide a measure of catharsis and even awe after a year of suffering and uncertainty in Japan and around the world. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate, delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news. Daily.